What's up guys, this is Cher talking, welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'll be previewing the new banner, Romancing Festival Human Female. That brings Human Female, a buffer and damage dealer, Human Male, a counter unit for AoE, and Mask. That's kind of a revenge counter, I believe. So, now let's move to Hands for a tree post. Thank you so much for always doing this amazing job. No character here got buffs, but one skill was changed for global, and that affected only Esper. Boy, now human female has 126% agility and 114 STR. That's good values for current standards, but nothing too high. Endurance is 71, could be better, but will is 82%. Moving on, uh, she has this very interesting passive called First Move Wins that she applies to the party for the whole fight. And on the start of a turn, if you attack before the enemy, you grant yourself a guard up medium, decreasing damage taken by 25% for the whole turn but if you are attacked you grant yourself a morality down small that would decrease your damage output but nonetheless on the turn begins everyone get this morality up very large for the same turn so the morality up alone is already an increasing damage i believe it's 40 percent so you get an increasing damage sometimes you get this guard up but if you are using martial artists they have high speed they will be getting this guard up as well but if the enemy is faster than you, you will do less damage. Then she also buffs agility of everyone in the party by 5%. Then, again, on turn begins, she buffs STR and agility by 15% for everyone. So she actually buffs 20% agility and 15% STR. Good for martial artists, but all STR based units as well. And the more agility you get, the more likely you will be attacking before the enemy to trigger your guard up. And then she also recovers 2 BP by the start of a turn and has 30% increase in damage at all times and reduced damage taken by 30. So, skill number one, uh, it's a deep power attack with 2 BP cost, blunt and slash, and gives action order volley up. Large effect for five turns. This stacks to allow you to act faster. So you really want to get that guard up medium by increasing your agility and the action order. This could be interesting for fights like Time Lord, because Time Lord has the same thing, he keeps increasing his action order till it becomes impossible to mm, attack before him. He will always go first. So you can actually fight this type of bosses by also increasing your action order up. Then second skill is a 5p MR single target attack that buffs STR and agility for all allies by up to 30%. So 30%, that's awesome because she already buffs 20% for agility and 15% for STR. So you can get as much as 50% agility buff from just this skill. And remember that she actually has 5 per turn, she can use this as much as she wants. But in Remembrance, you can actually evade some Remembrance fights, but on hard challenges, no. If you reach very high agility, enemies still buff their accuracy to a point where you will not be able to evade. But it's still very interesting for Remembrance and old content. The third one is an ATBP AoE Blunt and Slash Attack, just deep power that grants Blunt Attack Boost for all allies for 3 turns. This will increase Blunt damage by 50% on max level. So it's pretty nice because you can go into a rotation of using each one of her skills once, because you have 15 BP in 3 turns, or you can just try to use the skill number 3 and skill number one or just skill number three at two times every three turns and well she's just increasing her damage output and sometimes applying this guard up medium that would decrease damage taken from enemies but has to go first well we already have 20 percent damage reduction from people like for example maria and many others with scrum guard they also buff status but mm, they don't do much damage what happens here is that you are getting str and agility and you are not getting anything Defensively for status, just for damage reduction. So you are trading off better buffs for damage and constant offensive buffs. Still interesting, but not a character that I could say that's super important. Uh, it stays kind of in the middle of an SS plus grade and a triple S, but I believe it will probably receive an SS plus grade. I'm not entirely sure yet. The next one is Human Male. In this time, he's using swords. He has 116% STR and just 91% agility. And, well, 98% dex routine because he can inherit gun skills. Endurance and Will are always good volleys for this character. He has 
at least 102%, and Ransom 92% will. Still has intelligence because he wants to debuff. For his passive, he will be buffing STR and Dex Rity by 15% for all allies when he's attacking. And that's actually pretty interesting because it's similar to what you get with Julian. He's also a counter unit. Julian will be buffing STR of everyone when he gets attacked, and when he attacks, he buffs Endurance. It's a better combination, in my opinion. But you and me, you can use it with more offensive squads. You can cycle between gunners or, I don't know, bow users, rapier users with other STR users. But Julian will allow you usually to survive better, so there's that. He will also recover 1bp when attacking, and when attacked by a direct attack, he reduces damage taken and counters with an AoE slash and blunt attack with B power. This is a guarantee he will always counter this way, that's very nice, much like how Julian also always counters, but Julian is more geared towards just one boss, although he still works super well versus multiple ones. Then on the second one, he enters a town stance that lasts for 4 turns, that has medium effect, so he gets better to draw enemy attacks, but it's not like Julian that also applies stealth in the other people in the party. And also when being attacked, damage is reduced all times by 30%, and he will also grant himself this attack boost. Increase damage potential by 30%. He also has Iron Wall Defense 7, decreasing damage taken by <laughs> 50%. So two damage reduction passives, 130 under 50, and he even gets uh, counters, they are guaranteed. So, very good defensively. Now, skill number one is a single target slash and blunt attack that when the attack lands has a chance to stun and debuff the enemy's agility. Well, this is useful for our remembrance, but his intelligence is pretty bad. Nonetheless, it will not work on real challenges, but it's a free skill. The second one is an APP AoE attack with the power. Okay, that's uh, interesting because he goes with a fast skill and enters his defensive counter stance. That means that he takes damage, just like with his guarantee counter, and then he will counter with the same attack. So, what he actually does is open with one hit, and when he gets directly attacked, and now he will counter twice. That's right, with B power, AoE attack. And because he's attacking twice, he's going to recover BP twice, he's going to buff STR and Dexter twice, if there are too many enemies on the field, and he gets your counter. We just keep scaling damage to increase damage potential of himself and the whole party. The third skill is very powerful, but before, he also grants himself indirect attack nullify. So, he gets to counter, nice, increases damage, reduces damage taken. But if he gets an indirect attack, he will not take damage when on this stance. Okay, back to skill number 3. 13 BP for a 4 S sword attack, that is also fast. Before he attacks, he grants himself this morale up. That increases damage potential by 40%. To all allies and then he attacks so this attack is very powerful in 4s and he even gives this morale up if he stacked a lot of str buffs it's gonna rock and do lots of damage this is mostly a finisher type of attack because if you are using him correctly he wants to get attacked and you want to use skill number two and if you don't have ep use skill number one and when you are finishing an enemy or you just want to kill one before the other ones use this attack and you're going to do a lot of damage. Since he recovers VP when he's attacking, he probably can build up a lot depending on how many enemies you see on the field. This character here receives a list of triple S grade. Julian is still better, but he gets super close, so we'll be discussing him on future videos. Now, the last one from this banner is Mask, and he has a good STR, average Daxerty, because he can inherit gun skills, but this time he's using clubs again. His endurance is 81 and his will is 83, could be much better since he is still kind of a tank. And agility is pretty bad. Moving on, he enters a stealth stance. Yeah, a tank with stealth stance? More of a revenge counter. Then uh, it lasts for just that turn. All allies are then himself, if they are attacked, he grants himself this whip stance for one turn. It's much like the latest Noel that when gets attacked, gets an extra attack that will be used on the next turn. And this attack is Thunder Whip Plus. That is a C power attack, if I remember correctly, that has double elements, blunt and lightning, and can stun and paralyze. But uh, his intelligence is very bad, forget about the ailments, but he can actually use this many times, and if you get 
way too many enemies on the field, you only get one stance if it's an AoE attack. If the enemy uses something like quadruple strike, then okay, it will trigger once per different skill. The second one, damage increases by 10%, just that. And when being attacked and he dies, he will revive once with 100% HP. Then attack damage increases by 20 for a total of only 30 and reduces damage taken when being attacked by 25%. Start of a fight, 11 BP. So, a mix of old and new passives, and the best thing he has is his revenge. Okay, skill number one is B power, has delay, and grants himself an attack boost for two turns. So, the next attack is gonna do more. For just one BP and B power, it's pretty okay. And he wants to get that attack boost because after the attack boost, all of his chase attacks will have increased damage. Second skill is a 6 BP power attack that is also single target and buffs his own endurance and will by 30% on max level. This is for situations where uh, he needs extra buffs because it's not that high and you are getting inflicted with ailments. This makes sense. The third one is an 11 BP 4S attack that has delay as well. And before attacking, grants himself an attack boost. That increases damage potential by 30% for that turn only, and then attacks. So it will feel like a strong for us attack, but he doesn't have much damage passives. It's just okay. It's also critical to giants. So strong attack, but he himself does not buff offensive status. He just wants to keep building up his whip stance so that when he attacks on the next turn, he gets this small or very large attack boost and then all the chains attacks will do more damage it's nice i saw some videos of this guy running but i cannot say that he is someone that will make your fight work it's just extra damage and can get into some fun moments but not really required to clear any content i have to say that overall this guy here will receive an ss plus grade thinking about the future right now if you compare this to old units he will be better but uh, when considering what we are going to receive, and if you already have Julian, you already have a very good counter. And Yuma Mayo is the best one from the banner, because his counter mechanic is very good. He buffs the party, he gets super strong, he buffs AoE, can also be used for a single target if you want. And for people that miss it out on Julian, they have a better reason to pull. But you can still run Julian just fine if you want. At least in most counter scenarios, you fight one boss, not multiple ones, and even when there are multiple ones, Julian still rocks. So, Yuma Fimeus is strong, she buffs offensive status for martial artists and can even apply guard up, but if you think about just buffing, well, there are many buffers that can offer status, but in the end, she's also offering damage. Not really a mandatory unit as well, none of them are, so the banner is okay, nothing here is a must-have. You could skip if you want, and the banner will receive a silver minus award so far. That's what I believe. None of them are as good as the recent 3.5 anniversary banners, and you can skip if you want. But if you want to pull because they are your favorites, just do it. They are good enough. With all that said, this is my opinion so far, and I will be making a full review. And if you don't agree with my opinions, they may change. Please see here in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching, please subscribe if you haven't, and if you want to support our channel, there are links in the description as well. We have Patreon, PayPal, or Coffee buttons. Channel needs you to survive, especially now on the end of the year. See you later on the next episode.